since he cannot convert his son, he cannot cleanse his son, he cannot regenerate his son, he cannot transform his heart. That's why he cannot tame, he cannot change, he cannot turn the tongue. That's why it says, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Uh, we're coming to, you know, some men now. The way they spoke, the little tongue brought them into destruction. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 5. We're reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 5. Reading from verse 24. It says, therefore, as the fire devours the stubble and the and the flame consumes, it consumes the child. So their spot, their root shall be as rottenness. When you say their root, it's not talking of the root of the righteous. Of the root of the transformed, of the root of the children of God, the root of the common man, the root of the carnal man, the root of the lifestyle, the conversation of the common person who had not been born again, his root will be like rottenness, and it says they have cast away the law of the Lord out, they have cast away that law the law of the Lord of hosts and it says they have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel who are those people unrighteous people unconverted people unsaved people that's why because their hearts are not saved their hearts are not transformed their hearts are not changed that's the reason why their tongue will be like fire and the fire devours them. It tells us in Exodus chapter 5. Look at verse 2. Here is a Pharaoh. And here is the little tongue of Pharaoh coming out and saying what a man shouldn't say to his maker. About his maker. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? Go, I know not the Lord. Then he said, Neither will I let Israel go. Uh, can you make some connection there? I know not the Lord, because I know not the Lord, I will not let the children of Israel go. Because I know not the Savior, I will not release anyone. Because I'm not free. Because I'm not like Britain, because I do not know the Lord, the Lord who saves, the Lord who sanctifies, and the Lord who immerses us in the power of the Holy Ghost. Because I know not the Lord, I will not let them go. The people who were their tongue keep others in captivity. You know why? They know not the Lord. The people who speak outrageous words blasphemous words unbelieving words against the god of heaven you know why they know not the lord and because they know not the lord their hearts have not been transformed and your speech will betray you your tongue will give you out your tongue will tell who you are and what you are Look at the result in Exodus chapter 15. We're reading there from verse 9. This man that, you know, spoke against the Lord. I know not the Lord. Look at the result. Because the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity is set us on fire. The curse of nature and the man himself with that unruly tongue. The man himself with that blasphemous tongue is set on the fire of hell. It says in Exodus chapter 15, reading from verse 9, it says, The enemy said, Pharaoh, the enemy said, The emperor, the enemy said, 
I will, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, and my lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Uh, that's what is said with the tongue. And you can see the tongue, his tongue is for destruction. His tongue is for scattering. His tongue is for kind of eliminating the people that God himself has established. And he boasted with the tongue. The tongue boasteth great things. Look at the next verse there in verse 10. In verse 10, thou didst blow with thy wind the sea covered them they sank as lead in the mighty waters that's what's happened to pharaoh that's what happened to all his uh, army and all the chariots and the riders on the chariots in verse 11 it says who it's like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness and fearful in praises, doing wonders. The man perished because of his little tongue, what he had said against God. Look at Daniel chapter 3. Verse 15. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 15, it says, Now, if ye be ready, at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sabtry, and dulcima, and all kinds of music, and ye fall down and worship. It, the image which I have set up made and uh, well but if ye worship not ye shall be cast into the, the same hour in the midst of a burning furry furnace and who is that God that the little tongue acted again that the carnal tongue speaking again, that the unbelieving tongue speaking again, that the boasting tongue speaking again. And it says, Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? The Lord proved to him that the mighty God of heaven that makes the fire of the kingdom of Babylon nothing. He threw them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He threw them into the very fiery furnace, and the Son of God came. They were walking freely in the midst of the fire, and he called them out. You would have thought that would have been enough to break the man. No. Once the heart is not converted, whatever miracle you see, whatever wonders you observe once the heart is unconverted untouched untransformed the mouth the leaves the tongues will still continue in the old old way of talking look at chapter 4 in chapter 4 daniel chapter 4 we're reading from verse 30 in Daniel chapter 4 verse 30 and the king spake and said is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty look at verse 31 in verse 31 it says while the word was in the king's mouth there fell a voice from heaven saying O king Nebuchadnezzar a king but his tongue was not a, a kindly kingly royal tongue the pos whatever position anybody has 
whatever education anybody has whatever authority anybody has if the heart is not converted the tongue will still be canal whatever upliftment whatever opportunities anyone has in life if the heart has not been touched transformed tamed the tongue also will not be tamed and because of what comes out of the mouth the tongue then judgment comes it says to thee it is spoken like the, 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 the kingdom is departed from me look at verse 32 in verse 32 and they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the bees of the field they shall make thee eat to each grass as oxen and seven times seven seasons seven years shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth he to whomsoever he will look at verse 33 in verse 33 the same hour was the scene fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar and he was driven from men and did each grass as oxen and his uh, body was wet with dew, the dew of heaven. And it says, till his ears were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. You see, that was the problem. It was the problem of the tongue. As that touch with the Old Testament, no. As long as man has a heart and he has a tongue and the tongue is connected with the heart and the heart is not cleansed, the heart is not circumcised, the heart is not transformed, what will still come out of the tongue will bring fire, devastation, judgment upon the man. We're looking at Jude, Judas only one chapter. Jude chapter 1 verse 14 and Enoch also the servant from Adam prophesied of these saying behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints and then it says in verse 15 in verse 15 to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly ungodly that's the heart then the tongue unruly that the heart then the tongue unrighteous that the heart that the tongue to convince all that ungodly among them of all their ungodly unrighteous deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches hard speeches like the speech of Pharaoh like the speech of Nebuchadnezzar like the speech of Herod like the speech of the people whose hearts and lives have not been turned around by the Lord the hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him look at verse 16 in verse 16 these are murmurers tongue complainers that the tongue walking after their own evil laws and it says and their mouth and their tongue speaketh great swelling words having men's presence in admiration 
because of advantage is the problem of the tongue and eventually if somebody will come to this world or have the big mouth and the big mouth will be speaking against the god of heaven is called the antichrist look at revelation chapter 13 and reading from verse 4 revelation chapter 13 reading from verse 4 and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshipped the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him why because of what he says with the mouth because his heart was contrary to God. His heart was purposefully against the authority of the Almighty. And so he speaks from the condition of the heart. It tells us in verse 5, in verse 5 it says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blaspheme and blasphemes and, and, and blasphemies and then it says some power was given unto him to continue forty and two months then in verse six in verse six it tells us and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and, it, and his uh, and his uh, tabernacle and uh, in the and it says and them that dwell in heaven that the Antichrist and the big thing you know about the Antichrist is the tongue in the mouth is the blasphemy because of his devilish heart like that of a dragon what happens to him look at chapter 19 in uh, chapter 19 verse 20 um, revelation chapter 19 chapter 19 reading from verse 20 19 please in revelation chapter 19 reading from verse 20 it says and the beast was taken and with the false prophet that wrought miracles uh, from uh, from uh, before him and it says with which he deceived them that dwelt that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped the image and these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone you see the tongue will set the course of nature on fire and him that shall be sure be set on the fire of hell look at chapter 20 verse 10 in chapter 20 verse 10 it says and the devil that deceived them how did he deceive them by the tongue by the words of the mouth that, that's how people usually deceive that's how followers of satan that's how they deceive that's how they unconverted who are not born again and the carnal and the evil people full of iniquity in their heart the mouth deceives the people that they are relating with and it says and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever that's how serious it is to have a tongue that is misused 
a tongue that is not under control that little member that is not under control but understand you cannot control the tongue in isolation you have to have conversion in the heart you have to have cleansing in the heart you have to have the circumcision of heart and then the tongue will be under control if not the little fire will devour men great men small men common men even church going men if their hearts are not converted and their tongues are not converted we're coming to number two number two here we're looking at the little foxes that destroy great ministries the little foxes we're still talking about the tongue but now we're using the picture of the foxes we're looking at um, chapter 3 of James reading from verse 6 James chapter 3 reading from verse 6 and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members and then it says it that it defileth the whole body and is and setteth on fire the cause of nature and it is set on the fire of hell. And you remember the story that Jesus told of that rich man who lived sumptuously here on earth. Uh, and he didn't know God as redeemer. He didn't even acknowledge God as his maker. Eventually he died and he went to hell fire and his whole body was in hell fire the fingers the hands the feet the body but the one thing he singled out when he said father abraham sent lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame the tongue the tongue yes the whole body will go the whole personality will go to hell but the tongue in particular to cool my tongue because i'm tormented in this flame the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity it is set on the fire of hell look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says but the tongue can no man tame the tongue can no man tame friends who are here tonight brothers sisters who are here tonight the study does not lead us to just okay I'll be quiet I won't say anything, you will say something, you know, it's the heart. If your heart is provoked, your heart cannot jump out and say anything and point to the people provoking the heart. The heart will send message to the tongue and the tongue will show that you are under provocation. When somebody pushes you, and tips you to be angry the heart cannot jump out and show anger no the facial expression might show the anger but eventually it is the tongue that will lash out on the people that you are thinking and making you angry when the heart is frustrated and emotionally you are frustrated and you know the mind will not jump out the soul will not jump out uh, the soul the mind the heart will give the assignment to the tongue and say now emotionally all the members within the body they are disturbed and so tongue show them tell them it is the tongue and so if the heart has not been dealt with 
The tongue can no man tame. It says it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison. And you know how when people are sad, it's okay, I'm sad. What should anybody around me be happy? And so they send forth poisonous words to their neighbors. So that as I am sad, they too will be sad. In the tongue, a deadly poison. When somebody is, uh, you know, it's like in inside, there is an acid that is burning on the inside. Uh -uh. If I'm burning with acid on the inside, why are the people around me so calm and so nice and so peaceful? They want the other people to be as sorrowful, as corroded, as, uh, fear, as feeling pain, like they are feeling pain. That's why the tongue will lash out. So that if I'm not happy, you don't have a right to be happy. If I'm sorrowful, you have to be sorrowful. If I am not, uh, you know, uh, content with where I am, then there should be no contentment in your life. The tongue is full of deadly poison. And it doesn't matter, a little poison will make the water undrinkable. A little poison will make your environment in a bit uninhabitable and because of that little thing. Yeah, the tongue, that's the reason why we need to get that tongue back to Calvary and get that tongue crucified and the heart cleansed. A cleansed heart, a crucified tongue, combining together will help us to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The tongue is very important. Look at Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Take us, the foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the vines. The little foxes that spoil the vines. Think about it. A relationship is the little, little things that happen. The little words we throw at each other that spoils a relation. Think about the family. In the family, the little, little words not thoughtful not careful, just throwing out the word like an arrow, like a dagger. It's those little, little words that scatter the family. And think about the ministry, the work the Lord has given us. And you have a lot of people around you and you're working together and you're moving together in unison, in cooperation and in coordination, well coordinated. But it's the little world, you know, somebody there, something is rising from the heart. And whatever is rising from the heart gets to the tongue. And as soon as it gets to the tongue, and the fellow is not remembering that in unity there is strength. When you scatter us, there is no strength anymore. And the word comes to the mouth, and then it spews that out. That is the little poison that destroys a fellowship, a usefulness, a profitability. And so it's telling us that the little foxes, they spoil our vine because our vines have tender graves. It tells us in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 13, we're looking at verse 4, O Israel, Thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. That thy prophets are like the foxes. What do the prophets use? The tongue. What, how do they prophet, or prophesy? The tongue. How do they pray? The tongue. How do they counsel? The tongue. How do they encourage? The tongue. How do they speak false doctrine? The tongue. And because of the positioning, and because of the wrong use of the tongue of those prophets, they became foxes that scattered them. Uh, look at Second Peter, 
chapter 2, reading from verse 1 in Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 1, it says, But there were false prophets also among the people. Remember, it's referring to the Old Testament. There were false prophets also among the people. How do we know there were false prophets? Their tongue, what they said, what they spoke. When they confronted those prophets, confronted Jeremiah, and Jeremiah prophesied the word of the Lord. How did Jeremiah prophesy the word of the Lord? The tongue. That's why God said, I have touched your tongue. I put my words in your mouth. All the good prophets have is the tongue. The false prophets, when the false prophet came and said, No, Jeremiah, the captivity is going to last for only two years. And he deceived the people. How did he deceive the people? The tongue, the tongue. And so, it's the tongue that makes a prophet a uh, fox or makes the prophets foxes. And these little foxes, what they say with their mouth, it what makes people to believe lies. It what makes people to get discouraged. It's what makes people to say, okay, if that is so, we're going back to Egypt. It is the tongue that acts like that little fox that will spoil and scatter and destroy the ministry. There were false prophets also, among the people even as there shall be false teachers false teachers among you how do we do a false teacher by the tongue how do we teach whether you are teaching in the school or you're teaching in the church is the tongue whether you're teaching the home or you're teaching in um, you know the social circle it's the tongue and it's the tongue that betrays somebody as either a false prophet or a false teacher and then it says who privately shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves bring upon themselves the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity and it defiles the whole body it is it sets the course of nature on fire and the tongue itself now when it says the tongue will be set in the fire of hell the fire of hell you understand it doesn't mean when you die that God will cut off the tongue and throw it in the fire because it's the tongue that sets the course of nature on fire. And it is set on the fire of hell. The tongue still remains in the body. And the whole body of the tongue, because of the evil, the unrighteousness in the tongue, the whole body now with the tongue is set on fire. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it tells us, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And in verse 3, it says in verse 3, and through covetousness shall they with faint hypocritical pretending words make merchandise of you. And it says, whose judgment now of a long time so lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not it's talking about the judgment that comes because of the unrighteousness and evil in the tongue look at verse 18 in verse 18 it says, when speak, that the tongue again, in action. The tongue in action. They speak great swelling words of vanity, swelling words of emptiness, swelling words of shallowness. 
Uh, you know, the, the people who talk to their neighbors, I disagree. I disagree with that teaching. What do you disagree with? Okay, say what you say what you want to say. What comes out is vanity, emptiness, shadowness. It does not have any root. And they deceive their neighbors with their tongue. And it said they're speaking great swelling words of vanity. They it says a nail they entice through the lusts of the flesh. And it says through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. I have discovered all these many years, the false teachers don't generally go out to find people they are going to deceive. They normally go to the people who had escaped from error, who had escaped from sin, the people who had given their lives to the Lord, and they are saved, and they are praying to be sanctified, and they are praying to be steadfast in the teaching of the Word of God. That's where those false teachers and those false prophets, that's where they go. They don't go to the people that do not know they are right from their left. They don't go to the terrible, abject, original, depraved sinners. They go to the people who had been that others have labored on, that others have brought into the kingdom. And then they speak their own great swelling words of vanity, emptiness, shallowness, so that they can turn them back to their vomit and it says in verse 19 look at verse 19 while they promise them liberty how do they promise them liberty with their tongue they make the promises with their tongue and they say you'll be free if you'll be free that's good word but what it mean is you'll be free from the control of god You'll be free from the law of God. You'll be free from all the control and all the directives of the Lord. And you will be on your own like Lucifer. And you'll not be under the control of God. That's bad liberty. But when you're free from sin, that's what Christ came to give. When you're free from carnality, when you're free from worldliness, that's the freedom, the liberty Christ came to give. But he said, no, no, no. They, they want you to be free from the control of the word of God so that you can live as you please. And they're very serious about that. And they talk like false teachers, false prophets, and they want to assure the young people, free, you are going to be free. Young people, God sets us free from sin. It sets us free from self-will. It sets us free from satanic control or any other kind of freedom as false doctrine. And then it says, it says that the, 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 the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, but if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. I pray the Lord will not leave us in the hands of false prophets and false teachers in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the little faith that doubts our great maker. The little faith that doubts our 
great maker. And we're looking at, um, we're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 30. Matthew chapter 6, we're reading from verse 30. It says, Wherefore, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more close you, O ye of little faith? O ye of little faith? What has that got to do with the little tongue? Well, because we manifest little faith by the little tongue, by the little member. You remember the story of um, Rebecca, the wife of uh, Isaac, the mother of Esau and Jacob. Well, the mother was pregnant of the twins. God had told her that the younger will rule over the elder. And that the blessing the way she understood it, and the way it is said, the blessing of Abraham and Isaac will fall on the younger, on Jacob. Now, the mother heard that Isaac called Esau and said, Go make me the kind of food venison that I love, that I like, and bring it, and I will bless you before I die. Well, the people that think of death much, much longer before death comes. Because oh, if you read the Genesis properly, Isaac did not die until 40 years after. And yet his thought was going to die now uh, because he was having some old age symptoms. His eyes were getting dim, and he thought this is sign, old age sign. So, God make me the venison before I die. And the mother had that. And the mother remembered that God said he will give that blessing to the younger, to Jacob. But now, little faith. She didn't think that God can overrule that God can do what he needed to do oh ye of little faith called Jacob go take something from your flock and bring and will prepare and will take it to your father very quickly before he so comes back so that you will have the blessing Jacob said mommy what if my father discovers and see that I am a deceiver and puts a curse on me. He said, don't worry about that. Let the curse come on me, O ye of little faith. You know the story? That's how they played the game, the game of little faith. And Esau came back. Esau was angry. He said, I'm going to kill that man. If the little tongue of the mother that planted that hatred in Esau, and the deception in Jacob, and he deceived the husband. When we take out of the hand of God what he should do and what he will do, and then we manipulate so that we will be clever, more clever than God. That is little faith. And it's a little tongue that plays the game, and eventually, we get into trouble. Uh, we're looking at Matthew chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 26. Matthew chapter, chapter 8, verse 26, and he says unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Now, uh, the tongue does not have Fear. It's just, you know, kind of tissue and blood. It's the heart that has fear. 
And when we see this situ that situation, then the fear comes to the heart, and the heart spills out what it has to the tongue. Master, Master, careth not that will perish. That's what the tongue is saying. It came from the heart. And when the heart is fearful, that's the way the tongue will speak. And the tongue will waver, and the tongue will tremble, and the tongue will not be sure of itself because of the fear in the heart. Look at Isaiah chapter 51, we're reading from verse 13. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 13. And forgettest the Lord thy maker that has stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared as feared as feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy and wear the fury of the oppressor when we talk words that show there is fear there is trembling and we're not sure of ourselves we lose confidence we have unbelief and the little faith we have we forget what god had done in the past in the past in the bible in the past in our lives look at us we've been in the christian faith from that time how many years now until this time and look at what he delivered you from and look at what he protected you from but we have forgotten that the same kind of trouble coming today came already about 50 years ago 20 years ago and the lord delivered us and we're still alive after 20 years of that kind of trouble that men and women in the world that they that they stir up but the same kind of trouble comes today and we forget our God and then we fear the fury of men we fear the storm that men and women are racing up today and it says because of that now we're shivering we're trembling we're afraid because of the fury of men and the tongue well I thus say I cannot I cannot go out why he's afraid I cannot do that the tongue will be the culprit the offender that will say what it says because of the fear in the heart because the tongue cannot be disengaged from the heart you are fearful in the heart your tongue will tell and your tongue will betray you but then he tells us in Isaiah chapter 57 we're looking at verse 11 Isaiah chapter 57 verse 11 and of whom has thou been afraid or feared that thou hast lied that thou hast lied the fear is not on the tongue the fear is in the heart. The fear is in the mind. The fear is in the brain. But uh, the tongue uh, that will tell the lie. When uh, something has happened to the heart, and the heart is not stable, and the heart is not steadfast, and the hand does not remember, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. As the fear is brewing in the heart, in the mouth that will lie, and has not remembered, that, and has not remembered me, nor laid to thine heart. Then it says, Have not I held 
my peace even of old, and thou fearest me not when we fear man, we cannot fear God. When God has said, Go, do this, if we fear God, if we honor God, if we know that the sender will protect the one that is sent, we go. But when we see men, the frowns of Pharaoh, the fury of Pharaoh, and we become afraid of men, then we don't fear God anymore because we're thoughtless, and our thoughtlessness makes our tongue to now say, I cannot, I will not. The lions are outside there, they'll eat me up. That's the tongue expressing the fear in the heart. And we have not compared the Almighty God, contrasted the Almighty God with puny men, poor men who can do nothing. That's why Jesus said, fear them not. That have the power to kill, and after that, they have nothing else they can do. I will forewarn you, my friends, who you will fear. Fear him, the almighty God, who has power to kill and to cast into hell forever and ever. I say unto you, fear him. But our little faith will evaporate whenever we see the fury of men and we see what they are saying, what they are bragging about. It tells us in Luke chapter 12, we're reading from verse 28. Luke chapter 12, we're reading from verse 8. In verse uh, 28, rather, in verse 28, if then God so clothed the grass which today is, and then it says, and tomorrow is cast into the into the fire, into the oven. How much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? That's a problem. O ye of little faith. I pray our faith will grow in the Lord in Jesus' name. And then it says in verse 29, in verse 29, And seek ye not what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be of a doubtful mind. Little faith makes us to be of doubtful mind. But why should we doubt? He is our maker. Why should we doubt? He sent us to this world. Why should we doubt? He has promised and, and he has also pronounced what we will do here on earth. Why should we doubt? We're running the errands for the Lord. Why should we doubt? We're doing his will. We're doing his work. And he will give appropriate security and protection and provision to us. As we're doing his will, he will not fail you. And you will not fail him. He says, and seek ye, and seek not ye what? What he shall eat, or what he shall drink, neither ye be, neither be ye of a doubtful man. Look at verse 30. In verse 30 it says, for all these things do the nations of the world seek. And the sea cutter and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it says, But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. All these things shall be added unto you. When the heart forgets that, the mouth will be talking of inflation. 
when the heart forgets that the tongue will be talking of recession when the heart forgets the words of christ and he said heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away when we have that little faith and when we have that dying faith, when we have that faith that is slipping away from us, it shall appear the words of Christ will not be fulfilled, but the words of Christ will be fulfilled. <laughs> be not of doubtful mind, because if you seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you verse 32 in verse 32 fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom the riches of the kingdom the righteousness of the kingdom the provision of the kingdom and everything Christ died for and provided on the cross of Calvary it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom don't allow your tongue to run away don't allow your tongue to be you know so influenced by the doubt by the carnality by the world by everything around us let's make let's get this tongue back to calvary and you say cleanse my heart my tongue will be clean sanctify my spirit my tongue will be sanctified sincere upright and circumcise my heart and my tongue will be circumcised lord do something in my heart and fill me with faith in your word so that i'm not carrying about the little doubting the faith but i'm having the faith of jesus christ in my heart and your mouth your tongue your lips will speak good words and in your family husband and wife parents and children we need this faith faith in the lord so that and the love of god in our heart and the love and the affection in our heart will affect what we say with the mouth and the little member the little tongue the little fire the little foxes the little faith will not ruin any of our lives in jesus name you say good finally amen god bless you god has blessed you god will continue to bless you let's let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer that the lord himself will work on our heart so that it will work praise the lord let's commit the message unto god son that this night that our tongue that a little fox in our lives the lord will make it to be perfect will clean us inside out that we will not be hypocrites we will not just dress like christians we will not just call brother sister like a brother sister but we think all the dirtiness in our lives all the bitterness all the grudges all the backbiting and gossip lord remove it from our heart and let your name be glorified we thank you father for answering our prayers for in jesus name we pray amen praise the lord we really thank god for the message the word of God that has come to us tonight. I will encourage us that we should not just be the hearers alone. We should go back and see how this thing works in our lives. We should examine ourselves. And uh, anywhere we need to make amend, the Lord will give us courage, boldness to do it in Jesus' name. Uh, this time we're going to uh, listen to our announcement that we have. 
By the grace of God, this is the Deeper Life Bible Church, and we have our headquarters in Washington, D.C., 4915 Sargent Road. And uh, we gather together on Monday like this through the Zoom to study the Word of God, precept by precept, at the man of God who dissect them for us. And uh, we invite all of us to join. 6.20 is the time on Mondays. And on Wednesday, we have uh, the seniors meeting, which we call uh, an evening with Christ. We are inviting our seniors to join on Wednesday. And on Thursday, we have uh, the children and the youth, the children Bible study at 6 p.m. and why the youth at 7 p.m. on Thursday. We encourage our children and our youth to join and they will be abundantly blessed in Jesus and we'll catch them young and they, they will not depart from it in Jesus' name. And on a Friday, we have another important thing. Bible tells us to pray without season. So on Friday, we have um, prayer and revival hours. And this comes on 6.20 on Friday. And by the special grace of God on Sundays, we meet in our congregation uh, on our churches. God will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, special and also that we have. By the grace of God, this we have for um, outreach and um, fellowship at uh, DC Church. And uh, this comes at uh, 6.30 p.m. on November 15. We encourage all of us to meet together and God will do us good in Jesus' name. And uh, like I've said before, on Sunday coming on, that is our youth. They are having their day and the God will use them mightily for us in Jesus' name. On that uh, Sunday, with the title, The Ultimate Awakening. All people, all brothers, sisters, our youth that have been asleep in the Lord, the Lord will awaken them in Jesus' name. Every weakness, every uh, slumberness, those that have been slumbering in the Lord, the Lord will awake them in Jesus' name. And then by adventure, we have an additional announcement which we watch out on our platform as our pastor will post for that announcement unto us. The Lord will do us good in Jesus' name. At this time, we want to take our offering, uh, whatever we bring to the Lord, offering and tithe, <clears throat> our tithe unto the Lord. Uh, if you want to mail it, you can mail it to 4915 Sergeant Road, Northeast, Washington, D.C. And you want to sell it, you can sell it through our platform. And God will do us good in Jesus' name. So our Titan offering, uh, let us provide. Precious Father, we thank you, Lord, one more time. You have blessed us spiritually. You bless us, oh God, financially. You have blessed us uh, numerically. We are praying, Lord, as we offer our offering unto you and our tithe, that we will render and offer ourselves, our spirit unto you in Jesus' name. Father, the token we have given, oh God, from the abundance we have blessed us, we pray to be acceptable unto you. Thank you, Father, for answering us, for in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. At this time, we want to bring the uh, meeting to a close. At uh, this time, we want us to unmute ourselves to share the grace as we bring the meeting to a close. Our brothers, unmute yourself. And if the media can help us to unmute so that we can share the grace at the count of three. At the count of three, we share the grace to bring the meeting to a close. One, two, three, the grace.
in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of, the love of, God, love of God, and the, and the fellowship, the fellowship of, the of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of the dwelling the house of the Lord forever and Amen. We dwell in the house of the Lord until we see him face to face. We will not end our fellowship with him halfway in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night, brother. Good night, sister. And I will bless you richly.
shores of the Atlantic to the hills of Monrovia, a nation cries out for hope. Forgiveness goes along with freedom. It sets you free so that you are not in bondage anymore. Liberia, land of liberty, where freedom's flame burns bright. But freedom's true power lies not in our history, but in our faith. The kind of forgiveness that also brings freedom from the power of sin. Join Pastor W.F. Kumui at the GCK Crusade and experience the great escape through faith in Christ. When the grace of God comes to you, it makes you to escape the judgment coming on the earth. Featuring guest music minister Jonathan White. For this global crusade with Dr. Kumue, and because of God's goodness, we're going to see breakthrough. Because of his faithfulness, we'll see breakthrough. Expect that breakthrough as Dr. Kumue speaks. Reach out and claim that breakthrough. Happening from November 28th to December 3rd, 2024 at SKD Sports Complex, Moravia, Liberia. Time, 1600 GMT daily and 700 GMT on Sunday. Join the youth for an electrifying impact session on November 30th at 7 a.m. GMT and get the key to success without limits. Join esteemed ministers and professionals on November 29th and December 2nd and 3rd by 7 a.m. GMT for a transformative session and get unlimited power for life and ministry. Come experience revitalization and equipping for effective ministry, personal growth and spiritual renewal. GCK in Liberia. Escape to Jesus. Escape to freedom. Share the hope. Invite someone. GCK, gospel to every creature. The Lord has paid the price. He's been sacrificed for us on the cross of Calvary. He has given us redemption. He was foreordained to pay the price of our redemption before the foundation of the world. That shows us that the redemption we're talking about is not a limited redemption. It's full is complete, is all, all inclusive for your spirit, for your soul, for your body. From the time you are born again until the time you see him face to face, it's an all inclusive redemption. Everyone has been paid for. There is no one that cannot be saved. The vilest of sinners can be saved. The most wicked, the most terrible can be saved. And so, if the devil wants you to doubt your salvation, and he says, do you think you of all people can be saved? The redemption you have is not a tickle of redemption. It's not a small, little redemption. You know, there are people that think, I am saved, my soul is saved, my soul is redeemed, but my body, the devil is still in control. But now, he has paid the full price. And because he has paid the full price, from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, you are redeemed. The Heavenly Father has given a great prize for you. You are now a man, a woman of purpose, a man, a woman of possession, a man, a woman of dynamic progress. Calvary will have no meaning for those who have not repented. Calvary will have no impact on those who have not repented. You want your sins to be blotted out and you want the power of sin to be broken and you want the purpose of redemption to, be, to take place in your life. The Lord is watching. Anyone that repents, anyone that is converted, immediately all their sins are blotted out and then times of refreshing will start in their lives. Christ is happy and proud of you. And he's not ashamed of you. You were purchased for him. He has redeemed us. 
he has purchased us he bought us out of the hand of the old owner and he purchased us for himself and we're no more part for him and part for the old owner you purchased a car and now you use that car all for yourself the one that had the car before you purchased it cannot come and say i have need of that car now i'll use it for some days and then i'll get back to you will be interchanging the use that's how some people position their lives they serve the lord on sunday and then the rest of the week they're serving the old owner but now when you are purchased he has you entirely and fully and completely for himself the blood of jesus is the greatest cleanser that will make you clean and take every spot every stain every defilement all away at a go what the lord has ordained and the path he has chosen we're going to keep walking on that highway of holiness nothing will push you down nothing will double cross your way and nothing will stop you on the way in jesus name i saw pan with joy with assurance and with confidence knowing that the lord will perfect everything that concerns your redemption everything that concerns you that the lord will perform and perfect everything raise your voice to the lord and say lord i thank you lord i thank you lord i thank you the promise is mine the promise is mine open your mouth and tell the lord we have just heard the word of God from our Father and the Lord. Let us take all that we have heard to the Lord in prayer. Let's ask the Lord to give assurance of salvation to all those who have been born again for some time now and yet they are doubting their salvation. The devil is telling some of them, saying, are you sure with all the atrocities you have committed that your sins can just be forgiven so easily and so quick. That the Holy Spirit will open their eyes of understanding that they should know and realize that this salvation they have received is free, full, complete salvation. That God will help them to overcome the spirit of doubt that is going on right now in their heart. Pray, pray, ask the Lord to help them, to bring them out of that challenge, that they will be assured that they are born again and their names are written in the book of life. Some of them repented during the GCK. Some time ago, some repented in the retreat some repented during some other outreaches of the church. They need to be assured in their spirits that the Lord has forgiven them and that their salvation is full. Let us also pray for those who've been in the church for a long time, some for some years now, they are not yet saved because they have not decided the redemption that Jesus brought for us will not make impact in the life of anyone who hears this gospel and refuses to surrender his or her life to Jesus. They will enjoy the benefit of redemption only when they repent from their sin and receive Christ in their heart. That God will help such members who has been coming, who have been coming to the church for some time now without salvation, to repent and get born again. We also want to pray for those who are born again, 
who are yet to experience sanctification. The redemption covers our salvation, our sanctification, and the healing of our bodies. That God will grant every member of the church who are yet to be sanctified, sanctification of the spirit. That God will give them the hunger to pray until they are made holy. Let's ask God to help his people to know that this redemption is complete and full. Are you saved? You need to get sanctified. Are you sanctified yet you are sick? The salvation Jesus brought for us, the redemption, it covers both our soul, our spirit, and our bodies. Now God will help every member of the church to enjoy the full salvation that the Lord Jesus has brought to us. There should be no one sick, feeble person among us, soul, spirit, and body. Let's thank the Lord for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we just want to thank you for how you've spoken to us. We want to thank you for assurance of salvation. Lord, I pray that from this day, every soul that is born again in this church, that you give them assurance of salvation. Lord, those who are sick, you bring healing to their body. Those who are yet looking for sanctification, I ask, Lord, that you help every one of them from now to begin to enjoy the full benefit of the redemption, which covers our soul, spirit, and body. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And everybody said, I welcome everyone tonight to our Bible study in Jesus' name. Our congregation at the headquarters here and all over where we're connected with the world. And the Lord bless everyone in the study of his word in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for the provision of your word, the preparation of your word, and also the preservation of the word. All these millions, all these thousands of years, you preserved it for us for good. That we may be saved, that we may be prepared to meet you in heaven at last. We are praying, Lord, that the purpose of giving us the word will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to James chapter 3. We're reading from verse 5, and we'll be going eventually through to verse 10. Look at verse 5. It says, even so the tongue is a little member, a little member. Tonight, we're looking at the word little, a little member, a little tongue, a little finger, a little hand, a little toe, a little foot. Now, we need to understand that the tongue by itself, without connection with the heart, can do nothing, can say nothing. So, everything we're saying about the little member, the little tongue, understand, is in connection with the heart. The heart is the center of our living. And if the heart is unconverted, the tongue will be untamed. If the heart is carnal, the tongue will be critical. If the tongue, if the heart is dirty, 
the tongue will be obscene. If the heart is polluted, the tongue too will speak out polluted, perverse things. If the tongue, if the heart is cleansed, then the language, the tongue will be clean. If the heart is saved, the soul is saved, the inner man and experience that transformation of heart, the tongue will also speak clean. Conversion in the heart will bring cleanness of language and tongue. If the heart is sanctified, purified, holy, the tongue also and the language you speak will be sanctified words, they'll be clean words, they'll be pure words. If the heart is filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit, the tongue too will talk spiritual. So the question is not just about the tongue. It's the tongue in connection with the heart. And I must ask you the question, have you been saved, born again, since you started coming to the church or hearing the word of God? I need to ask you, have you been sanctified? Have you been cleansed? Have you been made holy in your heart? Then, since you started coming to the church, then your language will be different, your action will be different, and the use of your hand, little hand, the use of your feet, little feet, the use of your tongue, little member, will be profitable and purifying and defying to the people. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? You are just coming and coming and coming. You have not been saved. You have not been sanctified. You have not been filled with the Holy Ghost. The condition of your heart will tell, will impact the conversation of your mouth. So let's understand. We're talking about the little things, the little tongue, and the little member. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and it boasts great things then it says behold how great a matter a little fire kindled tonight we're talking about the little member that determines great matters for time and eternity the little member the little tongue the little part of that in your body that actually is so connected with your heart and your tongue cannot escape what your heart is thinking, what your heart is feeling, what your heart is planning. And it is that connection with the heart that shows the condition of your heart. I cannot see your heart, but I can hear what comes out from your tongue. I cannot touch your heart but I can be touched by what comes out of your tongue. And it is that connection, the little member that speaks out, that reveals the condition of your heart, whether you are converted or not, whether you are saved or not, whether you are sanctified, whether you are at peace or not in your heart. If you are not at peace in your heart, your tongue will not project any peaceful relationship or conversation. It's the tongue that reveals whether you are shallow or you are deep, whether you are full and filled with the Holy Ghost or you are empty completely. It's the tongue that tells that the reason why we're looking at this. There are three things we're looking at tonight as we consider the message. Number one is the little fire that devours great men. The little fire is talking about the tongue and it refers to that tongue as fire. The little fire that devours great men. Now look at number two. Number two is the little foxes. I told you we're concentrating on the word little. It appears little, a little word, a little sentence.